Hello. Hello, and it's a, it's a pleasure to be with you. So um, let me start by, first of all, thanking you also for the reintroduction of the Zendo mit der Maus, which I loved since my early days and now together with my children. So let's talk about digitalization. Digitalization is profoundly changing our life, our way of communicating, our way of working. And let me from the beginning be, beginning be very clear. I truly believe in the chances digitalization of processes can be simplified, can be more efficient, and above all, can be better, more correct, even more just. And processes can be everything from HR to finance, and of course, including production processes. And we heard from Sven about the digital morning meeting, also a process. Maybe more important than processes, it is possible now to get answers to questions which we couldn't get before because we didn't have the data or we couldn't use and analyze the data. Again, a few examples, predictive maintenance, real-time adjustments of production system, utilization patterns, track and trace, you name. Data is the fuel, or better, is the soil for digitalization. Because unlike fuel, it is not used up. You can use it many, many times. So the use of data together with artificial intelligence, meaning primary machine learning algorithms, this allows us, if I may put my physics nerdy term, this allows us to beat the Gaussian curve meaning that we can systematically address the individual case. And you know this already from consumer internet, like next product to buy, micro. Today, most systems and machines, be it pumps, be it heating system, or even the sowing of seeds in agriculture, be it the cleaning of rooms, all is steered by the average, because we can't economically afford anything else, but this will change with sensors all over the place, and then AI to do the analytics. We can now, in a cheap way, measure relevant environmental data, temperature, pressure, failure rate, and then automatically, by algorithms, adjust the respective machine. Consequently, also future production processes will be very different from today's ones, with huge savings of all resources needed in production, be it material, or be it the energy used for production. And this has immense financial and also environmental implications. Yes, it will need investment, but we have seen in many real-time cases, it pays off quickly. All of this was true pre-COVID, pre -COVID, but now everything has been accelerated. A recent Bitcom study has shown businesses with digital processes have come better through the crisis than others, of course. And this trend will not be reversed. On the contrary, digitalization will be used for further automating, meaning taking more and more people also out of processes to gain efficiencies, but also to make processes more resilient also to viruses. So it is the age of digitalization. You showed it in the first poll. We are all in the middle of the digital transformation will sooner or later reach all industries, all companies. The core question is, will you shape the digital transformation, or will you be shaped, or maybe even disrupted? In order to manage this change, there are many topics to cover, many areas to work on, and there are, as for any transformation, quite a few roadblocks to overcome. From my experience with digital transformation, be it during my time as Deputy Minister of Defense responsible for digitalization, and by the way, but not the topic of this talk, it's dark sibling cyber, which need to be watched out for when you go digital, or in my role in various boards. The biggest block for me is not primary digital or technology. It's about people, it's about change, and from head to toe. To get the digital transformation right and to get it done, we have to unblock the barriers around people. Let me talk about four barriers to unblock. First one, and we heard it from Alexandra already, all change starts from the top. So let's start with the head. Digitalization is not an end of its own, not a self-purpose. The leadership team, you, have to define a clear and convincing vision. What is the objective of your specific digital transformation? What will be different afterwards? What will be better? Is it about efficiency? Is it about ESG? What is the objective? Digital transformation is a journey. There will be rough times, there will be difficult times. The clearer the vision is and the objectives are, 
the better everyone can keep course. To do so, to set and lead through the course, you might need different skills, different expertise, even in your own management team. This could also imply organizational changes. Increasingly, companies build digital executive departments departments as execution and transformation drivers, which can but don't have to include classic work. In any case, the top management needs to own and drive the digital transformation. Otherwise, the resistances to change will dominate. All change starts from the top. And by the way, very interesting to follow the current debates of the new incoming German government sparkling around the question, will there be a digital ministry or not? Apparently rather not. The question where to bundle which task, not the focus of this task, but a great case to follow. And by the way, very similar to what Volkswagen or other major companies are going through. Second block, reskilling. The digital transformation is often referred to as the forced industrial revolution, given the size of the change. It will be huge because with digitalization comes automation as said before. And in addition to other industrial revolutions we had, this time all repetitive tasks will be automated. automated. Not only physical ones, but also in increasingly mental ones. After 150 years of industrialization, the degree of automation is roughly estimated to be 30%. Experts say it's expected to increase to 55% by 2025. So this will change a lot of jobs. The latest study of the Institute for Employment Research says that roughly 4 million jobs will be cut or lost and roughly 3.3 million new ones will be created until 2035. And so we have to think in some over 7 million people changing what they do only here in Germany, how they work. That's almost 20% of the German work and it can be more in some industries and some companies. We need new competence. Not everyone needs to be a programmer, clearly not. But data literacy, so the availability, the ability to understand how to use data will increase in importance, as well as general project management and problem solving. Given the size of the change, we need to define how we address adult learning. We have to find new solutions how to organize it. We need a comprehensive approach to make sure that we have enough skilled workers in Germany. We need a reskilling revolution, and we need it from head to toe, from board level to people front line. Yes, this is the task, a task for politics and for official institutions like the chambers, but companies have to do their bit. They need to define their individual reskilling need. So what type of jobs will you need and how many of them and by when and where do you stand today? And then what is the gap and how do you want to fill it? And remember, this will not be one of this will be ongoing lifelong learning. Third, the war for talent has just begun. Reskilling is key, but it will not be enough. It will need a dedicated and new approach for finding, hiring and retaining the right talent. And talent is scarce, especially in digital and software and technology. Already today, roughly 70% of SME here in Germany say that they are affected by the shortage of skilled work. That's up 5% from last. I think it needs a disruption in the way recruiting works today. Something professional services and also the big tech companies from the Valley have long understood. The company needs to sell its open jobs. Think of them as a product with superior features, a real value proposition, and then even a marketing budget to sell them. This is a very new mindset, but it is needed. Those companies who get this right will have a competitive advantage. First and last block, mindset. So you might have a strategy in place. You have the right skills and right people in place. There's one more ingredient missing in order to be successful, and that's the right mindset. By mindset, you might ask. Well, digitalization changes everything, but at the same time, digitalization is different. It demands rethink. The broad availability of information, the importance of networks and ecosystems, the speed of change, this requires new ways of working and a new mindset in order to be successful. Only installing a software package is not digitalization. As said before, we, it's a change process and it will change the way of working. It's a cultural transfer. This means 
We need different mindset, like more willingness to change, more curiosity, more risk taking, more agility is in our head. And also maybe probably a new leadership paradigm, one which is not aiming at controlling, but aiming to set targets and then trust in the people to deliver. That's agile and open itself. And yes, we also need more diversity. And this means more women, but diversity has different aspects. The digital so the software world is quite different from the hardware world. Software is built in agile ways. It's customer-centric design thinking, fast delivery of first products and iterative improvement. So in hardware projects, waterfall logic with clear engineering and endpoints dominant. So let's bring hardware and software together and get this done because this will be the economic foundation of the next. So allow me to sum up. We are in the middle of the digital transformation with huge opportunities for companies and also to address our environmental challenge. Without addressing the blocks, and for me, these are blocks around people, I named four of them, are essential and it will not be successful. All of this brings me to my final point, a sentence we as the Digital Council always end with, and that means why? Well, because we need to love and embrace the future. Thank you for your attention. And with that, I have the pleasure to ask you for more data and for another poll. So there will be a poll coming up around people and asking the question, which of four options you're currently finding most challenging or addressing in your company? Very much. And here is the poll. Please uh, pick one option. Uh, option number one is block number one, uh, the vision. Then option number two is reskilling. Option number three is block number three, new concepts of talent acquisition you are retraining, you know the war for talents. And number four, fostering a new mindset for change based on trust. So here we see the first result, which is live, means, oh, we have option number one and four voted quite a lot. Katrin, what do you think about that result? Oh, vision. Vision is leading at the moment. I love that. All change starts from the top. And I think it's it's so important. And we have we have leadership people here. We have we have leaders in their respective functions. So I think it's great if you embrace that. We need that. But Katrin, you are so positive. I could say as well. I mean, we are in the middle of transformation. You said, and half of our voters said this is the first thing they 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 think about. I mean, isn't that a sign of we are behind? Oh well, yes. Um, Obviously, and this is true, we are lagging a bit in, in Germany and in Europe on digital transformation. That's very true. Um, I think we're still having a hard time bringing hardware and software together. That's what I said before, because these are different things. But for me, there's no alternative. Hardware and software will go together. And by the way, most of the projects today don't suffer anymore because of hardware problems, but because of software. And, and so I think we have to embrace the challenge and then get it done because what I don't want is that the software companies, which are with all respect of their of their tremendous achievements, they're not based in Europe. So let's make sure we as the hardware companies, as the ones who own the physical world, bring the physical world of software. Yes, we're lagging, but we will get it. And maybe there's a good side as well, because if you still think about the vision, you are maybe open and flexible enough, uh, maybe to avoid mistakes or pitfalls some competitors <laughs> have experiences with. So yeah, uh, we take this result. Thank you very much for that. If you have questions, please use the ask button on the left side for Katrin and we will deliver these questions to you. I see we have a first one over there. Uh, Katrin, where do you see the largest difficulties in industry more on the management side or rather on the shop floor side? Yeah, I mean, the shop floor will dramatically change. That's what I said, and I think we all see it already. We heard it also from Sven Hamann in the beginning, all that will change. But in the end, it is about leadership. Alexandra said it, you all know it. The management need to guide through the change and help the shop floor to get it done. And also to help to get the people new skills and or help the transition, because as I said, we will have different factories going forward. They will be more individualized. They will be more automated. So we also have to help the digital people not to get become digital stranded, but to help them grow into other functions and help where we need different skills. So in the end, management cannot be let out of their responsibility. Never.
Well, obviously, that depends a bit on, on which industry we look like. Um, so if we take the tech industry in itself, and I sit on a board in the Silicon Valley, obviously, they are clear leaders. We can debate now whether they're faster and better than the Chinese, and in some areas, some other countries, or not. But if we push these aside, which is a different talk, one about digital sovereignty and tech platforms, which I love to give, but probably at a different occasion. If we talk other industries, then we shouldn't shy away. Like I said, we still own the physical space and have um, have great solutions. Like we heard it earlier in the day, we have great solution to bring manufacturing forward. And we know the Chinese are also pretty much doubling down on automation, but they still lack quite of the, of the capabilities we have. And then in the US, as we know, they lost parts of the industrial base. So I do believe in our region, we can own uh, the physical space and bring it to software. I can repeat myself, but I, I just believe. I mean, uh, I can say that as an outsider of the Bosch world, but if we have a look at uh, manufacturing, if we have a look at logistics, uh, the position isn't so bad. No, <laughs> and no I agree. Yeah, and of course we see it in a worldwide uh, perspective uh, Yeah, from, from Bosch. So, Katrin, thank you very much for your insights, for your ideas, for sharing this, this clear four blocks, and it was a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.